it's the morning of the Euro final in Germany. It's England versus Spain. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it'll be a great game, a memorable game. England can win their first major trophy since 1966 and put those memories to one side with respect and the new generation and the generation before that and the generation before that can have new memories let's see what happens let's see what happens everyone but yeah uh, good morning from the west Ham mines channel it's jazz just woken up in oi no i haven't i've been up cut the house done a lot of things dropped my door off to work and then got this lovely show ready for you. I thought I'd get one in early. I've got a lot to do. I'm sure you guys have got a lot to do. You've got to clean your barbecues, get your more beer in the fridge, get the food ready and get ready for this evening, everyone, isn't it? But it's the West Ham transfer news updates from the one I did a couple of days ago. So a few updates here and there for you. Starting off with this man over here, a young electric winger, Wesley Gasova, 19 years old, plays for Corinthians. Yeah, left winger, electric, pacey, dynamic, market value, 25, 26 million, linked to virtually every other club around the world. Um, probably one of the reasons Tim Steiton, he Tim Steiton loves Brazil, collecting the air miles, the boy, back in Brazil, looking at one or two other things. So, like I said, yeah, have a look at that footage. He looks electric. Um, very confident with the ball at his feet, very pacey, but be wary, it's the Brazilian league. But let's compare him. Let's compare him to Luis um, Carlos Gilherme, who we signed earlier on. So Luis Gilherme is 18. Wesley Gasava is 19. Height's about the same. I think Wesley Gasova is 5'9", obviously Brazilian. Luis Guilherme, slightly smaller. So they're both about five foot eight, five foot nine. More interesting enough for me, uh, Luis Guillermo is a right winger, but can play as an attacking midfielder or left winger, but predominantly right winger, even though it's left footed. So it's all a bit, bit kudos and Bowen. They're major foot. They play on the opposite wings. Bit weird, isn't it? But it looks like they they can play both kind of wings really. Apart from that, if I have a look at um, left winger. So Wesley, yeah, Wesley Cassava is um, more left winger. Uh, Guillermo is more right winger. 18, 19, 5 foot 8, 5 foot 9, both electric, both pacey. Um, not many games behind them. If I look at Wesley, um, about 16 games, couple of goals, couple of assists. If I look at Luis Guillermo, who already is a hammer, don't forget, yeah, a few games here and there. So I'll leave it to Tim Steiton. I mean, they're both, obviously, one's through the door around 20 million. The other one will be around 20 million plus. Not for me. Very, very risky. Very, very risky. But I trust Tim Steiton if he wants to go down that route. It is the Red Bull model at last, it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll see what happens. But he, he's kind of been linked th this morning. A skillful dribbler, good wide threat, really. So we'll, we'll see what, what happens with that, really. A apart from that... Um, the other major news is obviously, yeah, again, kind of on Downs. Flynn Downs, um, imminent move, I'd say, to Southampton at some stage in this window. Russell Martin, again, the manager, is trying to hint at his own club to make the deal happen, right? We want Carl Walter Peters. Carl Walter Peters wants West Ham. Downs wants more or less Southampton. Um, they want him, and I reckon it will happen. It's Southampton are just being a bit of a pain over the valuation of Walker Peters. You know, just make it happen. Both clubs can get their players early in the window, start training early, get those formations done, that kind of thing, really. So it's just more and more is edging closer, I think. And there's no other club coming in to shake it all about. Um, no one is saying we're not interested. It's getting more and more stronger. So I, I expect this deal to imminently go through unless something really surprising happens and then. Southampton dig their heels in and they end up with Walker Peters. He doesn't want to be there. We end up with Downs. He goes on loan somewhere else. It's going to get really messy. It just makes sense for this deal to happen. So expect that to happen at some point, ladies and gentlemen. Um, apart from that, let's have a look. Where's it gone? The other major news I was going to talk to you guys about. Um, where's it gone? I've got so much news here. So, yeah, for, uh, for, um. Juve centre back, 25, 26 year old um, Federico Gatti. Um, 
Not a name I'm familiar with. Not a name I've been linked with quite a lot, really. Newcastle have been linked with him. He's quite a bit of a powerhouse, really. Quite physical, six foot four. Um, again, they're looking for a kind of a right-sided centre-back to complement Max Kilmer, who's left. And and with respect, everyone, you know I say things the way they are. No messing about with me. Kudos, sorry, um, Bloody hell, Zuma really doesn't have any future at the club long term. His contract is up next season. Um, nor does a Gerd. He doesn't want to hang around. And and I don't think we're even going to keep those players for in terms of having a squad. We've got the Greek boy Mavropoulos and maybe one other one coming at some point. We'll, we'll have four centre-backs, I'm sure. And I'm sure we're going to end up with two strikers at the end of the window. And then a couple of good young full-backs. And we've got a couple of speedy wingers we're looking at already. One's already through the door. It's looking good, I think. It's looking good. If I look at the stats of um, kind of um, Federico Gatti, 26. Um, actually, he's 27. Actually, no, he's just 26 in June last month. Uh, three caps for Italy. Um, largely been on a loan a lot to a lot of clubs. But last season managed to play 50 games in Serie A, four goals. So, again, I trust the system. I trust what we're doing at the moment and leave these boys to it. But my job to you is that, yeah, he's been linked. It's quite interesting. And it's obvious now, like I said, we've been linked with one or two strikers every day. We've been linked with young fullbacks. We've been linked with a right-footed centre-back to complement Max Kilman. It's all the positions you guys know about and, and speedy wingers, bit of invention, all that kind of thing, really. So that's kind of on that. Another interesting fact, obviously, is that, yeah, we've been linked with a lot of players. A lot of high value, a lot of money. You guys are thinking, how much How much money have we got? How much can we bring in? The key is to get some of these players off the um, payroll, really. So it's not only about bringing money in in terms of a kind of transfer fee. It's about getting the wages off the books that saves the club a lot of money and they can go and invest a bit more. And and you're looking at, if I feel like there's a nice bit of information here, which are kind of list the top six highest earners at kind of West Ham, really. So let's have a kind of look at that. Um, Luis Paqueta, 150,000 a week. You've got Danny Ings, who's kind of £125,000 a week. Kurt Zuma, £125,000 a week. Bowen, £120,000 a week. Ariola, £120,000 a week, which is an eye opener, Ariola, isn't it? War Prowse, £115,000 a week. And War Prowse is the one where I keep mentioning very close to 30, if not already, no real sell value, 30 odd million fee. Mm, he's done all right, good lad, professional, but mm, not really a good business deal for West Ham long term, really. And I'm not sure. I will do that analysis tactic show, as I promised you. Uh, hopefully in the next up and coming days. And and I remember when Lopetegui was strongly linked and it looked like he was going to come in. I did that show, have a look at it. It looked like Ward Prowse wasn't going to fit into Lopetegui's tactics, the way he played. So we'll look look into that bit more in another show. But Paqua, you got to get this fixed. 150k stuck with him. Danny Ings is the one where he's just refusing to go, everyone. He's a good lad, but he's just saying going to happen to him. We're not going to... We really are not going to play two up front. It's not going to happen to him. It's a big mistake. I'm guessing that it's Sullivan signing. It's, it's a big mistake by Sullivan, um, who has no luck signing strikers, you know. Um, we'll see what happens. But you've got to get a Zoom and Danny Ings off the payroll. That's £125,000 each. And work out a solution for Paqueta. You know, 150 k a week. If those two, three could go, wow, that'll, that'll, that'll free up a lot of funds for us to go forward really by iterating again once the euros are over today the players come back to the clubs that includes the copa de south america over there things will start moving along a lot quicker um just bear in mind it's been a very long season for the players involved in both these tournaments so they'll probably go on on a holiday before they join the rest of the squad it's still going to be a bit of a delay but at least they'll be more local so if you're trying to do sort of um Deals for uh, John Duran Duran. It's difficult. He's all the way out there, other side of the world, really. Um, but yeah, things will try to move up. But then again, going back to we, we bought three people in. We're making inroads. We're having discussions. We're making bids. It's looking good. Instead of it being all, oh, we used to be really, really quiet and we start panicking and all that kind of thing. It, it's looking good. And I'm sure at the end of the window, we'll be pleased with what happens really so like i said um Juan Bissaka, that's getting stronger and stronger he's a right back uh, mid to late 20s 25 26 so a lot of these players like max gilman 27 the um 
uh, what's his name? The Italian centre back. He's he's about twenty six. Um, good ages, and then you've got the young Brazilians at 19, 20, 18, that kind of thing. It's good. The, the squad needed an overall, uh, needed an overhaul in terms of the age. We're fixing it. Everything can't be fixed in one window, but we're on the right track. We're on the right track, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but I'm pretty confident that Walker Peters, it's going to happen. Um, Wan Basaka, we'll see what happens. The fee's quite good, it, it's about 17, 18 million. Not more than that. That's not bad for a 26, 27-year-old who's largely been a regular in his first couple of years at United and still played 22 games last season, I think. He, he's fast. He's energetic. Needs a bit of help in terms of the final delivery, I think, um, which hopefully we can help him on. But he's certainly got a quick turn of pace. He's a very good man marker, very good defender. Um, and it's just that final bit when he's in the final third of the pitch that we'll need to get a bit more kind of a wing-back style out of him if we can, really. But the age is there. Walker Pete is very talented again. Left-back, right-back. Again, 26-27. Really, really good. Uh, Max Kilman, solid. Future captain material, like I said. Hardy gets injured, touch wood. And we're looking to complement him with a mini Max Kilman on the right side, left side, the right side. Walker Peters, Wambasaka type fullbacks, goalkeeper again. I am. I'm still not sure in Areola. I'll just say that I'm not sure in him. His his kind of coming out and commanding is not good. You know that you can see the defense is so shit last season. Zuma's captain was shit. No communication from him. Uh, no no kind of um, chemistry with Agerd or anyone else. Um, Mavropanos lost the ball so many times. We've got to work on that. We've got to sort it out. So my, I'm still sitting on the fence with Areola. I've got to watch a bit more. Let's see what he does this season. But for me, a few good games, a few bad games. He's got to be more commanding coming out. And, and just, just that kind of thing I need from him. Not bad punching the ball out and distribution. And again, shop stopping, no problem. But even with um, Fabianski, communication, terrible. Terrible, you know, is it my ball? Is it your ball? Make up your mind, you know what I mean? So that's the kind of thing with that. Um, apart from that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting good. I'm sitting good. I'm happy. Um, really looking forward to the new season. New manager, really happy with everything. You see all the footage again every day from Austria uh, training camp. I think they're going to be off to uh, Florida soon. Uh, I, lo- I love the J-Lo. He's going around having a laugh with all the players, patting them on the back. Had a bit of a fun and giggle with Zuma the other day. Uh, lots of um, interaction with Earthy. So really, really good. And I'm happy because I know players, certainly that have been on the bench, have suffered a lot on the West Ham the last couple of years. Some of the youngsters especially. So hopefully that will change. And and uh, the rest of it will follow. Just give the manager some time. Um, I know I shouldn't have mentioned it in this show, but on top of my mind, I'm looking for a top 10 finish in this season and then Europe in the next season. And that's what the board's targets are for Lopetegui, everyone, if you didn't know. It's largely a two-year deal with an option for year three. And I think that option in year three relatively largely only kicks in if we qualify for Europe within the two years. So he he's, he's up against it straight away. So it's not completely hands off for uh, Lopetegui, but year one, year one, he'll have more more comfort and more time to embed his ideas in. But certainly, I think that's about right. When you look at the, I mean, it, the squad has got a lot of problems. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of good things with it as well. And hopefully, we can build around some of those players. Um, unfortunately, what's happened to Pacquiao because after Rice has gone and Zuma's probably on the way out towards the end of his West Ham career, imminently then Paquetta would have been one of the really good senior players that we build around alongside Bowen and things like that, really. So we'll we'll see what happens. But yeah, back 10th, 10th I'm looking at, top of my head. Um, we'll find out a bit more once the window shuts and we'll see how we're looking in pre-season, even though I don't look at it too much. What I look at pre-season more is how we're playing, how's the tactics, how's the players. I don't look at results too often. And if you remember this time last year, we were in Australia playing Spurs. It was awful to watch. Do you remember, I think, um, Skamaka scored. Did we win? I don't care if we won. But it was awful to watch. A really shit football. Go to sleep football. And I don't want any, any of that. I want the players energised, excited, with a new manager, new tactics. And, and just go back to our little West Ham. Not, not mean struggling West Ham, but a bit more 
better football, better football slowly, but surely really. So that's it from me. Like I said, come on England tonight. Let's see if we can bring it home. It's going to be a huge, huge game historically, you know, so hopefully Southgate can go one better than the Euros last time and bring it home, really. Um, and that, Yeah, like I said, that's it from you guys. Hopefully have a lovely, lovely, quite nice sunny days looking today. I've sent the wife out to get some beer. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you guys take care. And uh, yeah, once the Euros finishes, um, we can celebrate next couple of days, hopefully, with a good result, England. And then I think, yeah, the, the, the transfer window will pick up again and we're, we'll get a couple of more deals done, hopefully. Anyway, come on, you Irons. Come on, England. You guys take care.